Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Retro and episode 5 of the Retro Gamer Show. Ah, oh, damn it! Coming up on this month's show, we've got a brand new item for you. Stay tuned to find out what's going on here. It's an eventful year in this month's Games Chart Flashback. In this month's product review, I take a look at some amazing retro gaming wallets. I get to check out an insane retro gaming shop. We also take a look at this month's upcoming retro gaming events and much, much more. We've got an action-packed show for you, but before we check out all that, first of all, we've got a new feature that we're calling... So yes, it's Show Us Your Collection. Now this part of the show, each month we're going to hand over to one of you guys, and then hopefully you're going to come on and show us your collection. But there's one catch. We're giving you three minutes and that's it. Yep, so you're just going to have three minutes to show us your retro gaming collection. Now this is up to you how you use those three minutes. So you might like to uh, show us as much of your collection as you can in those three minutes. Or you might want to just show us maybe your favourite parts of your collection or maybe the rarest items from your collection. Or maybe just concentrate on your favourite system. It's entirely up to you. But after the three minutes, we're going to be pulling the plug. Now we decided we better start and show you how it's done. So we, earlier we played a Jungan match as per Alex the Kid to find out who was going to go first. For best of three to see who shows our collection. So here we go. One, two, three. Okay, oh. you win. Uh, no, I win. You win. Uh, you paper, wrap, stone. Yeah. Okay. Do we know the rules? <laughs> you win. Okay, ready? Okay, next up. One, two, three. Ah, it's paper rock stone, so okay. I win. Right, so it's well, one all, the decider. Here we go. Last one. One, two, three. Ah, scissors, beach, paper. I win this game. So as you see there, I won, and it's my turn, and I'm going first to show you my retro gaming collection. So while I go to my games room and get ready to do just that, why don't you sit back, relax, and watch this month's games chart flashback? <laughs> In this month's Games Chart Flashback, we're going back to the year of the first ever London Marathon. Prince Charles had a busy year, first getting engaged to Lady Di in February, then marrying Lady Di in July, then finally in November announcing that Prince William will be born the following June. The first DeLorean, DMC-12, later immortalised in the film Back to the Future, was produced in Northern Ireland. Bucksbiz won the Eurovision Song Contest with Making Your Mind Up. And Shaky was number one in the UK charts and wondering what was behind that green door. Did you guess it? Yes, we're taking you back to August 1981 with the Atari 2600 chart. At number five, the legendary Space Invaders. We think this is a pretty good conversion and it sold bucket loads. At four it was Pelly's Soccer. Now Pelly looks happy with himself on the cover, but if he thought this was a great football game, he was sadly mistaken. And I will say football because that's what it's called, not soccer. From a smiling Pele and an angry Colin, it's Dragster by Activision at number three. And believe it or not, this was Activision's first ever release. At two, it's another release from Atari and it's Warlords. Now we think this game resembles a sort of combination of Breakout and Pong and can be played by up to four players. I know what you're thinking, 
And it's not the North Korean missile system, it's Missile Command at number one. And what a great game to end this month's Games Chart flashback. Well, 1981, what a fantastic year for Atari. I'm here with Mario and we're just waiting to find out when Colin is ready as he's going to do the first show as your collection. Mario's got his stopwatch. Colin, are you ready? Yes, James, I'm here in the games room all ready to go. And uh, for some reason, it sounds like I've got an entire school outside because the neighbours are being quite noisy. I don't know whether you can hear that, but not to worry about that. Right, Mario, Colin says he is ready. Have you got your stopwatch ready? I think that's a yes. Colin, how are you going to do this? So what I've decided to do, James, is to do like a little mini games room tour and try and show you as much of my collection as I can in the three minutes. Right, Mario, so Colin is going to show us as much as he can in three minutes. Start the clock. So starting off at the top here, we've got the Virtual Boy. Then we've got my Commodore 64 games. There's some classics in there. Then down here, we've got my Zap 64 uh, magazines issues 1 to 60 in folders. So that's uh, pretty cool. If we go over to this side, we have got my PlayStation games. Uh, my favourite console, obviously the PlayStation. Probably Toon B1 and 2 are the, probably the rarest in here. Then we've got the cardboard box PlayStation games, then PS2, PS3, and a PS1 with the uh, screen, which is pretty cool, always good for taking on your holidays back in the day. Over here we've got Grandstand Scramble, now that's still working, that's my original from back in the day and uh, my first ever gaming system. Got a few of my favourite Amiga games there, Speedball 2 probably being the favourite. And if we come down here we've got uh, my Sega consoles. But if we move across we've got the uh, PS1, PS2, PS3. We've got the Xbox down the bottom, the Xbox 360 and the Gears of War Xbox 360 Special Edition. Then my Games Freak, which I actually left, I think that's better than the uh, uh, Retron 5. I think that does a much better job. And then at the top here we've got the Atari 2600 games, my Vectrix games, a few Fairchild Channel F games, and then we've got original Xbox and Xbox 360 down the bottom here. Now if we move over here, there's two posters for two of my favourite Amiga games, Speedballs 2 and The Secret of Monkey Island. And on this shelf is probably my Nintendo shelf really, you've got NES, SNES, N64, GameCube and Wii. Then you've got the handheld Nintendo stuff, and Atari Lynx with some games and some retro gaming magazines down the bottom. Then moving across over here, this is the Sega shelf, so you've got Master System, Mega Drive, and then you've got the um, Sega Saturn games, Mega CD, Dreamcast, then some Sega Game Gear stuff, and the yellow Game Gear, PS2, PS Vita, and my N-Gage stuff down the bottom there, and a few joysticks as well. Coming over here, we've got a Bush TV, not the greatest, but it's got a DVD player and a <coughs> video player all built into it, so it's pretty cool. You've got the Vectrex, then you've got the Commodore 64, my first ever so a real computer apart from the Commodore 16 which is down here, the Commodore Amiga 600, the Commodore Game Station, you've got a, a CD Mega, a Sega CD Mega, and then you've got the PS1, Servo Graphics over here as well, and an Atari 2600, and oh I almost forgot, there's uh, my, probably the rarest thing in my collections over here and that. the timer ran out just before Colin got to show his rarest item um, but never mind what's that no no we just don't we just started we can't break the rules already Mario is insisting that we go back to Colin so yeah why not then let's do it Colin you still there what's that mate yeah I'm still here oh the rarest thing that I've actually got in my collection yeah it's over here this is the Echo the Dolphin Sega Mega Drive box set which was released in limited quantity and I'll just get it down you can see it there. so in there you've got actually see if I can open it up in here we've got the game well we've got a t-shirt first of all and then we've got a certificate for adopting a dolphin 
And then you've got a game and a music cassette and some cards as well in the, with there, I think. I think So, yeah, this was done in limited release and probably the rarest thing I've got in my collection. So, anyway, I'll uh, join you back downstairs. Well, Mario, I bet you're a bit pissed off considering that was a Sega product. But never mind, it was good to see Colin's game room. Now, if you guys want to take part, leave us a comment and just... Let us know that you'd like to take part and show us your collection. As we said, it's up to you how you want to display it, but you've only got three minutes. Now, coming up next, I recently went to Street in Somerset. Now, if you guys don't know where that is, get a map. Here's my trip to Insane Games in Street. Okay, Mario, move over. This is our show, not yours. Yes, so I'm back from my games room and uh, just caught the end of that video there, James, and that looked like that shop had an insane amount of games. Oh, it's funny because that's the name of the shop. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good little shop. If you're ever stuck being dragged around Clark's Village down in Somerset, oh, is that you where just, it is? Yeah, yeah, if you just sneak off out <laughs> uh, down the high street, there's a little precinct and the shop's in there. So yeah, loads of, loads of different kit in there for all different consoles um good staff yeah good shop okay so uh moving on recently we've been as you know going to a lot of these retro gaming markets and my wallet's been taking a bit of a pound in and i decided it's looking a bit worse for wear time to get a new one so i thought why not invest in a retro gaming style wallet Lately, I've started to notice that my old and trusted wallet has started to look a little bit worse for wear. It's starting to fray at the bottom and it sort of just feels like it's at some point going to start to fall apart. So I decided maybe it was time to do a bit of an upgrade and I thought, let's take a look and see if I can get a retro gaming related wallet. 
Now I knew there were some available, but I was surprised actually how many there actually are when you start to take a look. So I was actually tempted to go for this PlayStation wallet. I mean, after all, I keep telling you guys that PlayStation is my favorite console, but I don't know why. For me, this one, the design just didn't really do it for me. The wallet I decided to go for in the end was this Atari 2600 wallet, which I think looks really cool. Now, when the wallet arrives, it actually comes in packaging that looks like this. And it's made by a company called Numskull. Now, you may have heard of them because they also make retro gaming t-shirts, key rings, coasters, and things like that. Now there's a bit of blurb on the back of the packaging that just simply says, in a world where you can pay for things with a tap of your phone, why would you need a wallet? Because they look this good, that's why. So they're pretty sure that this is a good looking wallet, so let's take out the packaging and take a closer look. So once out of the packaging, this is your wallet, it looks like this. Got a nice picture there on the front of an Atari 2600, and it's a six switcher, so that's good. My favorite model the old woody and uh, then on the back you've also got like I presume was what it looks like on the bottom of an Atari 2600. I've still got an Atari 2600 in my collection today but must be honest I don't really look at the bottom very often. So on opening this wallet up oh, as we can see I think now the thing that really drew me to this is it's got this very nice embroidered Atari logo down in the bottom there which I really like that's pretty cool. And it's also got a coin sort of uh, purse or side to it, which is in here. It's held down by this popper, which again, which is really nice. So you can get, not the huge amount of room in there, but you'll get like a few pounds in there, uh, just the odd pound coin. So when you're down the boot cell and you see that bargain game for a pound, you can just pop out your pound and pay for it. So if you're giving them a tenner and then the seller saying, oh, I haven't got any change. Sure, we've all heard that before. Uh, and then over this side, you've got room for several um, credit cards, there's probably one, two, three, four sort of slots for credit cards and driving license and things like that, business cards. And I'm sure you can probably, I've not actually tried it, but as with other wallets, you can usually double up and get sort of extra in there. So you'll probably get about eight cards or business cards in there. And then of course, finally at the very back, you've got the section for your notes. And my old wallet actually had two sections, which was nice. There's only got one, but I'm not going to really worry too much about that. And overall, it really has got a nice feel, a nice texture to this wallet. It feels nice. I don't think it's actually proper leather, maybe, but sort of a scotton smell to it, but I don't think it's leather. Um, and then it's got nice stitching. The stitching is really good on it. I really like the way it's stitched. That's very impressive. So yes, overall, I really like this wallet. I can't wait to start using it. And uh, sure, it'll be a bit of a conversation starter as well when people see it. And so, yeah, so... Next time you need to upgrade your wallet, why don't you keep it retro with a retro gaming wallet? Well, Colin, that looks like a pretty cool retro gaming wallet. Yeah, it's uh, really nice. It's been holding it well. I've been using it for a while now, and I was surprised at how many different styles of retro gaming wallet there are out there. If you want one, there's plenty of choice. Now, next up, we're going to show you upcoming events in the world of retro gaming. And first up, there's an event in London we're hoping to attend. Yes, it's Play Expo London, held at the Printworks on the 11th and the 12th of August. Do check out playexpolondon.com for more information. Next up, we've got Rapture. Now, this is an event that's actually touring around the UK. Now, this event does seem to have a bit of everything from modern gaming to virtual reality, but more importantly, it does have a retro arcade. You can catch up with the Rapture Tour on the 11th and 12th of August in Fife. 
For more information on this event, visit rapturegamingfestival.com forward slash five. And if you're stuck for something to do the following weekend, we've got the Portsmouth Guildhall Games Fest. This event promises to feature all sorts of retro goodness and board games as well. It's all being held on Saturday the 18th of August and for more information visit guildhallgamesfest.com And finally this month if you're into your pinball there's UK Pinfest. They're promising 100 tables and all on free play you would be flipping crazy to miss it. The event is being held on August the 25th and 26th at the Mercure Hotel in Daventry. For more information, visit ukpimfest.com. Well, there's certainly plenty of retro events coming up soon for you guys to check out, and we're going to be at Play Expo London. If you see us there, do say hello. We're not taking part in the cosplay, but we'll be there. <laughs> um, if you want to get your event featured on the show, just get in touch and we'll get an ad put up. Yeah, so that's nearly it for this month's Retro Gamer Show, but before we go, we'd just like to draw your attention to this new magazine. This is Fusion from the guys at Fusion Retro Books, and uh, it's a really nice magazine that covers all sorts of things. It covers retro, current gen, indie, tabletop, and toys, and uh, this is the very first edition. It's A5 size, it's uh, glossy pages, and uh, it's got like a nice feature on Astro Wars, Killer Instinct, it's got some reviews of Wipeout VR, um, uh, Hyper Sentinel, which is a game that I'm enjoying on the Switch, and they also take a look at Horizon Chase Turbo, which is a game we featured not too long ago on this uh, show as well. So that's Fusion Magazine, and if you'd like to subscribe to this or buy a copy, then you can do so by visiting the website www.fusionmag.com. But uh, really, that is about it this time then, James. Yeah, just a big thank you to everyone who commented on last month's video. Their names are rolling along the bottom of the screen now. And uh, yeah, and also a big thank you to all our new subscribers and our old subscribers as well. We really appreciate your support. And until next time, James, what they got to do? Keep it retro, everyone. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.